Welcome back guys. So last night at midnight, Nikon released firmware 3.2 and that's to address the Nikon Z6 and Z7 for ProRes RAW. This is real great news because exactly one year and one day ago, Nikon released ProRes RAW and that just was a mind blowing event that I was actually first in line back then to get the upgrade. It was $220, but it was well worth it. But last night, Nikon made the biggest firmware upgrade and that was to release Blackmagic RAW for the Nikon Z. The first generation that is it is not available for the second generation that will come out in february but for the first generation as they said it will come out in december and it sure did the only issue is the fact that you do require the black magic video assist 12g for you to record black magic raw there's been some major upgrades within the menu of the nikon z system that will allow you to pick which one it is you want to use although i'm not sure why they did this as far as like naming it they should have called it already what it will be they could have just called it ProRes RAW and Blackmagic RAW, but they didn't. They just called it Type 8 and Type B. This is not a light update. It's a big update and it's extremely good news for a lot of Nikon shooters. The only problem with this is going to be the fact that you have to be in the Apple ecosystem for right now at least so you can manage your files, edit your files, and get the most out of it. We're getting white balance adjustments and ISO adjustments. That is the biggest news there is right now. There are some other minor updates that also happen. We'll touch upon those minor updates slightly, but then we'll dive into this Mac deeper so we can see exactly what it is that we're getting with this whole new firmware upgrade. Let's get right into it because this is real good news. And I'm telling you right now, it is much better than I expected it to be. I did a video about power aperture about two weeks ago, so if you haven't seen it, please do. But apparently there was an issue with it. If you were shooting for a long extended period of time when it came to video or you were on standby, sometimes this thing will actually turn off. If you had that issue happen to you, it is now addressed, so that issue is fixed. As I said in my video, I love the fact that it's a stepless feature. You can turn any focus ring of the S-Line lens into an aperture ring. You can move it, it will shift your, your aperture seamlessly from one to the other, and you can make it stop reasonably within the next stop that you really want. So that's been fixed, plus the fact that it also addresses bracketing shooting. So if you're doing a photography and you were bracket shooting, sometimes it will display the wrong aperture on the actual camera. I never had that issue. Plus there's some other minor issues that you guys can see. I'm gonna put that on the screen right now. And this is what matters to me more. I have five files here, three of which are shot on the same ISO of 100, but with different white balance. The other two are shot with different ISOs, but the same white balance to see if we can get something back. This is exactly what I want to see, how much there is to gain within the raw file. So the first thing I did on this first file was to actually go to settings here at the bottom. When you first open Final Cut Pro, it comes, you only see this, the basic dialog, and it doesn't show you much. But as you guys can see, if you go to settings, you can see the metadata of the camera. It shows you that it's shot at ISO 100 and you can adjust this all the way from 50 to 25 600 so those are the adjustments for the ISO as well as your exposure offset your camera control temperature which is your white balance it was shot at uh, white balance 4900 but you can adjust that here as you can see there's a uh, there's a lever adjustment here so you can move that as soon as you uh, import the files into Final Cut Pro the computer itself automatically knows from which camera it is and applies the LUT automatically. So as you can see here, the raw to log conversion was applied. I'm not doing any color grading or whatnot. I'm just applying the LUT and the conversion from raw to log. So that's exactly what I'm showing you so you guys can see what it is. And this is the first file with an ISO of 100 and color temperature of 4810. It looks really good. In fact, the colors here on the Mac, I do like best over Premiere when it shows you because Premiere kind of tends to throw everything off for some reason. But here, the colors look very natural and it doesn't seem to show that much noise either. So that's kind of nice. Let's go on to the next file right here. This file here was shot at ISO 100 as well, but with a color temperature of 3860. In Premiere, you see this to be different. In Premiere, you actually get to see this whole wall to be green, but here in Final Cut Pro, you don't. For some reason, it automatically converts it to almost the right white balance so you can have a proper starting point. Right now, what I'm seeing, it looks really good, uh, but I did adjust it to 4810 like the other file, but if not, you can see it, it looks more blue than usual. This is what the original file looked like, and that's 4810. And in this one, you, you see it as well, but it is a lot more blue. In Premiere, like I said, this file looks green. 
So on this file right here, which is ISO 100 still, but with a white balance of 10,000, you can see I brought it back to 4810 and it looks exactly the same. White balance has the most uh, gain that, you, that this thing has thus far from what I'm seeing, because if I go back to what it's supposed to be, this is what it looks like. For a, ten, a white balance 10,000, it looks kind of yellowish. I'm pretty sure it looks more yellow in Premiere, but in here in Final Cut Pro, it doesn't seem to be that off. So when you go back here to this file, you can see that it is not that far off. But as soon as you type in here 4810, 4810, it goes back to the same color that the other files have, which makes it true raw and true white balance compensation. So white balance now works perfect in ProRes RAW, and that is something you can look forward to having that adjustment. Premiere is way behind compared to this feature right now. This is true raw white balance adjustment. This shot, as you guys can see here, it has a different ISO value. It was originally shot with an ISO 500. Usually I would not shoot at an ISO 100, uh, 500 with an aperture of 1.8. As you guys can see, it gets blown away. So how much can you get back from this? If I go to ISO 100 here with a proper, it still has the right white balance of 4900. It tends to be a little too dark but it does a lot of details since we overexposed. So I think for the right portion here will be ISO 200 and it looks really good right there at ISO 200. ISO 200 brings back all the details without a problem. Even my skins are not blown away and you guys can see that there's a lot of gain there. Although it seems to me like there's not much gain when it comes to this file right here. This file right here was shot at ISO 2000 ISO 2000, let's go to 2000 to see what that looks like. ISO 2000, I tried to bring it back. There's no coming back once you overexpose a file, but I'm gonna have another follow-up video to this because I wanna see the limits. How much can you go within certain aspects of it? Maybe there's some brackets right here, like if you're between, let's say, ISO 100 to 1600. So if you can salvage those files, then that'll be great. So I just need to find those brackets. Right now, it seems to, from 100 to 500, you can gain everything back without a problem. So based on what we're seeing, I can tell you that the white balance works limited. Not sure how much it is that you can offset that portion or how much you can gain back yet. I need to do a test up on that so I can see how much you guys can push before you lose your data on your highlights or your darks. Mess up your white balance. It doesn't matter no more. For ProRes RAW, it's working quite well. I still would like to know how it would work in Blackmagic RAW, but Blackmagic RAW is not accessible to me at this moment. So that's the upgrade that happened today. So with that, Thank you. Have a very Merry Christmas. And like always, please subscribe. If you haven't yet, please do. I've noticed in the analytics that almost 95% of you guys watch my videos, but do not subscribe. Must be, the, must be me, I guess. huh? So I hope not. But if it is, let me know in the comments down below. Anyways, see you guys next time. Take care.